Hi, this is Stephen from Mona Disso. Following on from my video yesterday where I detailed the new 10th gen Comet Lake 8 CPUs, I wanted to do a simulated test on the i9 10980HK 8 core CPU that Intel says will turbo, turbo boost on all 8 cores to 4.4 GHz. I thus clocked the i9 9900K in my Clevo laptop to 4.4 GHz and ran a series of CPU tests to see how it would get on against the Ryzen 7 4800H, which has a base clock of 2.9 GHz and a single core boost of 4.2 GHz. So let's see how it gets on. First up is 7-Zip. This compresses and decompresses data to replicate what we would do with lots of zip files and represents the score in MIPS or million instructions per second. So higher the score is better. This is a particularly strong test for the Ryzen and the 4800H beats out the i9 10980HK by 13%. Second we have Blender where the benchmark renders a number of images and measures the time taken. I add up the total time and show it here in the seconds. So lower the time the better. The i9 ends up being 12% faster which I don't think is too bad considering that laptops with this CPU are going to be much more expensive. On to the well-known Cinebench R20 which again renders an image and gives a score at the end. This is the multi-core test and higher the score the better. There's just over a 4% advantage to the i9 here so you know not bad. Now let's look at the Corona 1.3 benchmark where again an image is rendered and the time taken is recorded. The lower the time, the better. Ryzen doesn't do so good here, trailing the i9 10980HK by some 18%. But bearing in mind the likely price difference, this is the type of result I would expect to see, especially with that 4.4 GHz clock on all 8 cores. But this isn't what we see in many tests. Here's the CPU mark that is part of the pass mark uh, range of testing, testing a range of tasks such as mathematics, encryption and sorting, and a final score is given. The higher the better. The Ryzen 4 800H beats out the i9 by 19% here, so not everything is about clock speed and cores. The difference in architecture must play an important role too, depending on the workload involved. As for using Handbrake to encode a 4GB 1080p M2 TS video file to MP4 and measuring the time taken, the results were really close. This is quite a long test, and if a CPU is going to thermal throttle, this test will expose it. So hats off to the Ryzen chip here, only 3.6% behind the i9. Okay, for those basking in the Ryzen CPU glory, we get a knockback with the Adobe Premiere Pro. Using a software encode to work the CPU, I measure the time taken to do the job, so the lower the time, the better. Intel's i9 does really well here. So yeah, if you use the Adobe suite, you will likely want to stick with an Intel solution, unless you use the GPU to hardware encode. Last but not least is the Times by CPU score. The higher the score, the better. Now it's not a huge difference here, only 5%. Good result for the 4800H, I say. Now for those wondering, I did test PC Mark 10 Express, but I was concerned that the LibreOffice suite was being accelerated by the GPU. There was quite a big swing in favour of the i9, but that laptop had the GTX 1080 versus the 1660 Ti in my tough A15. Alright, so let's look at the summary across all 8 tests. Sure, there were some big swings in favour of the i9 10980HK, and to be fair it won most of the tests, but I would expect it giving its huge clock rate advantage. But the 4800H did win 2 out of the 8 tests, and in 3 tests it was only beaten by 5% or less. This gave an average deficit of only 5%, which I don't think is a huge defeat. Now, if you do get the Ryzen 9 4900H with its 200MHz single-core boost advantage, this gap will be slightly closer. It really is a shame that Ryzen CPUs won't be offered with anything higher than an RTX 2060, so it's up to AMD to improve their mobile GPU offerings to compete on the higher SKUs. I'd like to thank you for watching. Next up, I will have the full gaming tests on the ASUS TUF A15, so make sure to subscribe to catch that video. Bye.